I, I, I heard people sit there and say that this album was different. Yeah. And God damn. <laughs> yeah. That shit is different. That's 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 really something that's different. It's it's like like I, I be doing so much in my life, like getting businesses moving and shit. Right. I don't be getting a chance to listen to every artist. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So right. like I'm I'm over here sitting like who why didn't anybody like alert me a lot Tell longer you. before? Cause this shit is crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. That, I've been the, on that shit. Like it really ain't nothing new. I guess it's just my platform is a lot bigger now. And um, it's a the the album is a lot more anticipated album, mm. and the style of music from me that people be waiting for. So when people figure out like, oh, he finna drop another one of those, a part of that, uh, a part of that seek, uh, a part of that, that 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 collection, he's finna add to that collection to get our gospel. The like the awareness goes out a little further than normal because people know what type of substance and what type of content matter to expect when I rap on Ghetto Gospels. So at the end of the, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like, see me as an artist, I'm known for being so versatile and having so many different personalities and styles and language languages in which that, like, on, on this album, I might be talking about dripping and splash. In this album, I might be talking about uh, 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 women. This album, I might be talking about Houston culture. This album, I'm talking about struggle, pain, and, and and overcoming adversities in life and shit like that. So, but to be real, it's like I always rapped like the ghetto gospel style first. Like that's my original form of rapping. That's how I started out rapping. That's why I'm so good at it. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Definitely shit. Definitely at home on them on them gospels, man. Yeah, Definitely yeah. That's that's like I know why I started it and like. I just been through so much in life. I took so many losses. I took so many challenges and tests and, and obstacles that I had to overcome. And also being um, front row seat witness to a lot of other people's traumas and things that they went through is like in life as well. I just kind of like grew up real fast and real early. That's why I like I be so um, into having fun. And enjoying myself laughing and being childish because as a kid, I ain't really get a chance to be a kid. As a kid, mm. I had to be an adult. And I had to understand world, the world and life from an adult perspective very young. So it just trans in, it tra it transcends in my music a lot. But a lot of people that's like real Sauce Walker fans, they know even when I make them other type of albums and other styles of music, they know that the... That the the word and the message is there. They know that the gospel is there. They know, like, because even when I'm rapping about other subjects and, like, using different styles, it's, like, a little bit more party or more fun or more, um, how could I say, it's, like, more socially acceptable style of music, maybe. Maybe that's the word for it, like, party, yeah, like, feel yeah. good music or, you know, more, I, I don't like Main to use, shit. I don't like to use the word turned up or shit like that. So it's like, you know, just f music that's, that, I don't even, I can't say average either, but like just the, the the way the music is reciprocated nowadays, you know what I'm saying, with the youth, youth right. type of music. Even when I do m youthful music, I still be having that shit in there, that message in there, that, that power, that lyricism, that game, it still be within my music if people actually listening to the words and deciphering and really hearing it. No, I mean, well, listening rather than hearing it. That's, yeah. that's a better way to say it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I, I know that when I, it's something that I was telling him earlier today as I was listening through the album. I feel like, um, you know, with most music, you could catch a certain vibe to it, but the the message isn't getting through that right the right way. Right. I feel like I was in a room talking to you while I'm listening to it. And, I, and, and what I told him that I was most impressed with was that, because I'm like, damn, I could really like, I feel like he's talking to me and he's telling me something and I can hear it. It's like, it's, it's, you can memorize it as you're going through it. You know what I mean? The picture is truly there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like that's kind of like the, the whole makeup and um, blueprint of the whole, really with a lot of my music and my style period. Cause a lot of my, my, my lyrics are storytelling based, but at the same time, like I make the type of music where you really can just close your eyes and see everything that I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I kind of try to make music that's like, it's reality. Like, even when I'm having fun with it and 
I'm, I'm, I may be um, exaggerating the, the vocals in my voice or the chords in my voice and going high pitch and low pitch and just really having fun with it. I always try to make sure that I'm saying something that you can actually just close your eyes and imagine and see, and whether you're seeing it from a personal uh, point of view or if you're seeing it from a third person point of view, you can still see it happening because that's like kind of the way that life was given to me. I learned so much visually by hand on experience than I learned from like studying or hearing from someone else. Like a, a lot of the things that I know and a lot of the knowledge that I obtained, I possessed it because I went through so much fast or I was around people that was that had a lot of knowledge and experience and they knew my situation and my struggle. So they felt the need to try to teach me or show me something. So like I just was a person that just was like a sponge and I absorbed all of that. And when it came to making music and expressing myself, I've just always been a, a visionary. I've always been a person that has like high um, perspective and insight and I always could like see, I could see a mountain turn into a shopping mall before you knock it down. I could see a forest turn into a community. I, I'm like one of them type of people that could just see something. What made you that way? Um, like all the way back, going all the all the way back since you were you you you're just a young chick. Like what what made you that? Because t- I because I, I listened to your interviews and mm-hmm. I, I listened to the music and and you really like I, you're a true entrepreneur. Absolutely. Um. Well, it's a it's a combination of a lot of things. Of one is not giving a fuck. Two is um being a realist, like you know what I'm saying, like just a person that's like overly consumed with the fact that reality is reality. So I don't try to go against what's the obvious and try to like be blinded to it. Like if I feel like if I feel something is a certain type of way and I challenge that information. And uh, the the answer or the theory or the hypothesis that I come up at the end of my own personal study, if my personal opinion or belief from my own reality is different than what everybody wants me to believe, I'm still going to believe what I think. Yeah. Because I'm going to thoroughly study that to challenge the information that was given to me and that's given to someone else and that's being recycled. And then if you want to believe what you want to believe, that's your choice. I believe what I want to believe, that's my choice. So I just always been a firm believer on, like, if I see something a certain type of way, even if I'm wrong, find a way to try to find the right in my vision or understand why I'm seeing it the wrong way. So therefore, when I do exchange information i don't want to sound not only wrong or dumb or i i want to teach the right proper shit so it's like mm, i always been a person that's like i've i i don't certain things that i don't agree with about people opinions or music is like how can i change it without being a, a, a representation of how i feel and what i believe is right in the first place so it's like before you try to tell somebody to stop hustling or selling drugs, you should get, you got to give them a job opportunity or give them something that's better to do than what you're telling them not to do. Mm-hmm. So it's like I just always been a person that just had a very, very different type of perspective on life itself. And that trans it, it transfers into my thought process and the way I make music or the way I act. So when me becoming an entrepreneur outside of music, it's like, I already made a decision that I don't want to do the 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 record the record deal major label typical typical com- commercial type of artist situation. I I want to be looked at as a mogul or somebody that's bigger than their artistry itself, which I've already accomplished that. But it's still an ongoing process, and I've always been more than a musician, even because I'm not a. I, I started out with music young, like a lot of rappers or most niggas in the rap game, like put out the image that, oh, yeah, I never thought I was going to be a rapper. I was I was doing this, this, that in the streets, or I was doing this, this, that in sports, or whatever. I never do. I would just, one day in the trap, everybody just say, hey, bro, you know what, bro? I think you could be a rapper. That was never my story. Even though I really did all that other shit that was really going on, I always wanted to be an artist. Though. I always wanted to be in music. I, I recorded my first song in a real studio when I was six years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've been freestyling with my uncle and my and my family members since I was like three so was it was it your uncle that got you into the music shit? Uh, he first person that made me feel comfortable rapping a lot. 
but I was already, I already had the love for rapping. I came to him like, I want to rap. But he put me on the Houston style of music and the Houston culture of music, the screwed up clicks, the little kikis, the fat pets, all the people that I grew up idolizing in music first before I started venturing off into the, the music of the world. I, I really found music through, through, through screwed up music and Houston culture first. Like a lot of the times that I would hear a West Coast artist or a, or a New York artist would be on a DJ Screw tape. You know what I'm saying? So that's like kind of how I found out about majority of music in life, period. Because in the 90s, everything in Houston was screwed and chopped, even if it was music coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Unless I was watching like some BET shit or something. Like, I mean, MTV at yeah, the yeah, time, yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yo, whatever was going on at the time. So yeah, like that's. But for me, um, I just always looked at it like with me knowing that I'm a bigger personality than just being a musician, I always had other hustles and other ideas and other things that I know I could turn into lucrative assets and make it successful. And I did that, you know what I'm saying? And I always wanted to have control over my music career so I could have control of my time. So if I want to take time away from music to go do other things and help other people or you know, try other business opportunities, my music career is not hindering or holding me back from being creative in other areas in life because I have to adhere to a schedule that somebody else made for me doing my in my music contract or my music career. I, I I like freedom. Being a person that's been incarcerated, been in jail, been uh, lived the life of poverty, but I've also lived a life of of um sometimes having fortunate situations through my family as well. Like, but majority of my lifestyle was like poverty and not having nothing. So with me being a person, I've experienced being teased with living in the suburbs for a little while, but majority of my life was growing up with nothing. So it's like. I kind of just, you know what I'm saying? I just got a, 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 a greater understanding of hustling and having business savvy and business perspective to see that once you can be successful in music or in something that's entertaining and you have ownership in it, you can walk away from that and do other things and you won't have to go through what people call being canceled or... or um losing your assets as a musician because you walked away from music because you sold it off for the, the, the starters package in the music in your music career i came into music with money already I, like i already had a a good understanding and hustle of how to create revenue for myself so once i got to doing that it was kind of like okay whatever i make money in, in music is like a house or it's like a, a car dealership or a new restaurant that i own once I've owned, each album is a different restaurant. Now I got 15 different restaurants. It doesn't make sense for me to sell my restaurant franchise to go in acting or to get another, to get a bigger opportunity. I have to sell my ownership from all these other companies I created. That's like usually what it is in music. Before you can leave music and become Ice Cube, the movie um, entrepreneur, you had to sign so many different record deals with so many different companies and give away so many different assets. But some of these people... Record labels do help out a lot of artists' careers and change their life and give them platforms and opportunities. Some people are not as charismatic as me and all that other type of shit. I get it. So they need that push. You know what I'm saying? Every, this to each his own. It's just for me, I'm the type of person that if I can own what I worked hard for and then put it to the side and start doing other business adventures or other things that I want to do that I can make money from and then teach other people how to do it, that's, that's the type of way that I just like to do shit. That's just how I look at it. So that's why I was able to just set my record label up for myself, my friends, get everybody situations, distribution, and then boom, now I go create up other shit that I want to do, video games, clothing lines, stores, OnlyFans, whatever, like just anything that I could just come, that I know I could, or marketing, advertising, all of that shit, you know what I'm saying, just different shit. Those are some key elements that not everybody has. Yeah. In 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 their uh their toolbox, so to speak. To pull yeah, up. right. Right. One, one thing about it, and something that probably definitely benefits you crossing over from the entrepreneurship over into music, is vision. You can't have a business if you don't got vision. If you don't know what's gonna happen quarter one, quarter two, three, four, it's, it's a lot harder to navigate. Especially once you must start multiplying those businesses. Especially once you start going on tour and you in city to city. If you don't have that vision, a lot of shit gonna fall off. A lot of business deals gonna fall off. Right. So this, that, and the third. So. Definitely got that. <laughs> appreciate it. I appreciate side. it. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. You could argue that a lot of your stuff is ahead of the time. Yeah, I'm um I'm kind of starting to real I mean, I can't say that I'm realizing that I'm starting to 
people tell recognize you that. that other people are realizing yeah. that. That's what I want to rather say that people are starting to like look past um, the image that I have or the persona that I have for people that only know me through social media or they haven't actually dug deep into my story or you probably only seen me scrolling down your timeline and through someone else in the conversation but you haven't really had a chance to get in depth into me as an artist some people that have and they only got to hear like I said the entertaining music but not the message in the music because in all my music it's a message like I don't ever make just dumb music that don't mean nothing even my exciting music it's got a bunch of meaning into it if you understand the yeah, language you're talking the, real shit all the time always yeah. always so yeah. with that being said it's like um, I feel like with, with over time of people seeing that I'm not a that I, no matter how much they want me to be a failure I'm not a failure I feel like that's, that that plays a big part in it too because people seeing that I've had like ten years of success almost in the rap in the rap industry and just being a successful entrepreneur people know my my um my portfolio of businesses that I own cars that I own real estate that I have. People look at my network every day. People see that I'm always doing sponsored um, advertisements and posts with different companies and shit. So people see the success, and people see the success combined with the resilience of doing it his own way. And not only doing it his own way, but getting up off your ass and hustling and traveling state to state, shaking hands and ba hugging babies, uh, going to people's backyards, meeting their families, recording in studios in Timbuktu to, to the best – professional studios in the world so just doing just just getting still even though you're a, a, a owner of a million dollar company you still willing to get your hands dirty with the construction team of that company and I feel that when people see that 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 act of I don't know maybe it's not the word chivalry but like that act of integrity and 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 purpose and just divine dedication to bettering oneself and other people. People are inspired by that. And outside of them being this programming, this in my head, Sauce Walker's this great rapper. So Walker, outside of him being this personality, I've been rapping on the same level that, I, that I'm that i rapping right now. Like, yeah. it's not nothing new. Jay-Z told the world four, five years ago that yeah. Sauce Walker is something that y'all need to be paying attention to mm -hmm. when he rapping on this ghetto gospel show, or rapping period. Yeah. So I feel like people just now... It's like all the. It's like when you like when you filling out a job application test and all the checks got to get checked out before we just say, "All right, this nigga a goat." Yeah. I I, I find real I, shit. Feel yeah, me? Yeah, I finally yeah. got to the point where it's like everything that they wanted to say about me to go wrong or to not be right, Different. it's not right. It, I'm I'm bulletproofing it. So now it's like, Is damn, it? this nigga music. Now now we have to hear what he talking about mm -hmm. and he talking that shit. And he talking the shit that the, the community and the people really need. And who else delivering lyrics like this right now? Who else can even go in the studio and rap with this much power and this much presence and meaning? Confidence. And man. confidence and really saying shit that, that needs to be processed in the souls of a lot of these young kings and queens that's being raised in this generation. And on top of the fact of not diluting it and watering it down with auto-tune and singing and shit like that. Like actually giving it to the people where it can be reciprocated and learned. You know what I'm saying? On top of the mm -hmm. fact that it's still good, fun music, and it's still it's still something that 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 you can have a good time and make memories to that music is made for, but it's yeah. definitely like a meaning in the in in message in it as well. And it's just my, that's really just who I am as a person. Like, I'm I'm all of these different people in one. I'm Sauce Walker the dripper. I'm Sauce Walker the player. I'm Sauce Walker the, the pastor, the preacher. I'm yeah. the gangster. I'm out of there. You know what I'm saying? I've been through <laughs> so many different walks of life. The video game, I'm out of there. So, sure. anime, I throw everything about life I like the terminology to pink seats. Yeah, I think that yeah, shit is yeah. Probably, that shit might be the dopest fucking terminology <laughs> I heard in my motherfucking shit. life. Yeah, for sure. I think sure. I'm switching the way I, I operate my whips now. Yeah, you know for, sure, I mean? for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. That's what I mean. It all comes from the womb. The womb saved my life. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I wouldn't know. I, I probably would have been a rookie if it wasn't a pussy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we can say this on YouTube. My bad, y'all. Nah, you could say whatever the fuck you want. That's how I go about it. Okay, you know my bad, yeah. So I, I, I believe in, the, the when I was listening to your interviews and listening to your music, I believe the same shit you believe in while I'm sitting here uh, listening to you talk about you don't believe in life the same way other people believe it. You take it, you know, like you got to you got to learn that way. Right. As I'm raising my son now. Right. I got an eight month old son. 
I, I believe that, like, just because somebody else is telling me this is how you got to do it doesn't mean I got to do it that way. Right. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't want my kid to end up like your kid. Mm-hmm. I don't want my kid to end up like you. Stop telling me, oh, well, you got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. Let, mm-hmm. me, let, me, let me do what I do. Right. And if I'm doing it wrong, I'll figure it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then Absolutely. I'll adjust. But don't just tell me how to do some shit. And I love that, that that's how you go about life. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And then you, you kind of... You flow right through the shit, just like you're doing your music with your life. Like you're, yeah. you're really getting a lot of shit done. Right. And it's set an example, and I, and and I see that you also give other artists this opportunity as well, putting them on games. So talk to us a little about that. Uh, because growing up, like I said, I never was one of these people that's like, oh, I want to be a rapper all of a sudden because I see 15 other niggas that's rapping now that I'm 15 in high school, and I see this is cool, this is gangster, this is tough. That's never been me. I always wanted to be a rapper as a kid. I was forced into the the street life and everything that came with that, with the way that my mama was and the way that my where my father raised me at, like where he was where he was born at, and that where that where in my hood where I know coming from South Park. But being split between the two, going back and forth between Houston and Chicago, I seen again so much so young. I had to pick up a different understanding for the way I wanted to go about helping other people because I was like, okay, boom, I see so many people that come from the same struggles and the same backgrounds that I come from that they got the greatest talent in the world or they got the greatest ideas in the world, but they don't have a voice. They don't have a platform. They don't have nobody that's going to believe in them and give them a support system. And again, everybody doesn't have the cons- the confidence that I have, the resilience that I have, the work ethic and the just divine determination to say, if I want to do something or something, I feel like something's going to happen, I'm going to make it happen. It's still people that got great ideas, great potential, but they don't have those tools in the repertoire, as he said earlier, to actually f- fix the problem and yeah. get the get the job done. So when I was growing up as a rapper, it, as a kid rapper, rather, I used to be mad at comparing the way that Houston and Texas was with as far as like the the the, the outreach and the 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 opportunities that were just mm-hmm. laid there for an artist that's from a California or a Atlanta or New York, even even Florida, but Florida kind of more or less went kind of through what Texas went through because Florida had a lot of superstars that was from Florida, but it's not a great amount a great amount of them that went back and signed younger artists or worked with younger artists from Florida yeah. to just walk them into the music industry. Yeah. People like the Kodak Blacks and the the X X X and Tosh Youngs, they really had to make a name for themselves and then people want to come and work with them. Houston has never had that grace up until I really broke the mold and made a difference. The only person that was trying to do it and that was doing it in Texas, in Houston, that was giving back to the younger artists was Slim Thug, and that's a person that helped me get my career going, Slim Thug. But outside of him, nobody from, you would never have those moments in Houston where you get the uh, uh, T.I. and Future record or the Young Jeezy and the Migos record or, or Young Jeezy and um, R.P. Um, Bankroll, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You 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 never you you never got those moments in Houston where you got the the hottest big artist that's popping at the moment that's young with the biggest OG Texas artist or not even just songs where they say okay y'all are the, the young talented artists that's coming up out of Texas. Let me sign you to my record label. Let me put this chain on right. you. Like you know what I'm saying? Teach you some game. Teach you, out of teach you the game. Take yeah. you to the award shows and bring you to 106 and Park and show people like this yeah. is what we got next coming up out of right. Texas or out of Houston or out of Dallas. And we never we never had that. We had a lot of artists that was just trying to keep themselves in the in the circuit and in the cycle and keep their age group or their group of artists with the opportunity and I grew up kind of um I grew up with a sh- with a chip over my shoulder over there. I grew up with resentment with a lot of the artists and my legends from my city because of that but it was also a part of a little bit of ignorance on my own not understanding the business and why certain things are done certain ways and why they don't just rap with everybody or the person that's the hottest 
that, 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 that really has the potential or is deserving in it because sometimes they don't have the time. Social media wasn't present. They didn't have the time to see who is what and what's who, which I get that. But at the end of the day, when you from, uh, like I said again, a New York or you from uh, 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 California, uh, Dr. Dre is going to make sure that he found the game. Uh, Dr. Dre is going to make sure he works with Kendrick Lamar. Snoop Dogg is going to make sure that he works with YG and Kendrick Lamar. He, th- these people, I can go down a long list, yeah. E-40, whoever, any of these legends, and that's what keeps their culture strong. That's what keeps their culture rich. That's what keeps it rejuvenating where you can, when you have the 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 Benny, the Benny and the Butchie and Buster mm-hmm. Rhymes do a song together, it, 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 it create a surge of energy back into your hometown spirit, whether y'all from the same state or the same city, y'all still share shit, similarities yeah. in, cu- in culture, yeah. if not the exact same culture. So it's kind of like I've been in a state where our teams have always been playing against each other when it comes to cultural boundaries and respect, and that kind of made a, a whole infiltration in my city and in my state to where other people from other states and other artists can come, other artists, excuse me, can come to Texas and exploit the the fans and exploit the radio and exploit the just the momentum that surges around Houston because people were so lost and disprideful of being from Houston because of our our status in the music industry and our style was looked at as white tees, swangers, old Cadillacs, gold grills. Yeah, yeah. It's still people that to this day that when you bring up Houston culture, how Houston is, they be like, oh, who Mike Jones and Paul Wall? Mm-hmm. Like, even <laughs> though it. these are gr- these are greats, but it's still so much, so much more to offer of from from present day to past about m- my culture. And I seen, I just seen that gap, I seen that void, I seen that problem. So I felt like, okay, well, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna use my platform and my power and my opportunity that I possess. And my me holding the torch to give back as much opportunity to young artists, young artists, young um, uh, producers, uh, young uh, party promoters, radio. A lot of the DJs that I used to work with in the streets that was in the clubs, getting their name going, giving them uh, spots on my albums to host my albums and stuff with TSF when we was a growing uh, label. Now they work at the radio now. Now they they the uh, uh, the the um the um. Okay. The spin, the, no, 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 no. They're program directors now. Oh, some of them oh. have become program directors and stuff like right. that. Yeah, they they actually like got in high positions in radio and stuff like that. And I built relationships with all of these different people since young, where people didn't want to give them a shot, you know, or they didn't want to post they post their product, post their content, let them come to their album parties. I did that young, and it and it's just starting to turn around to where it's helping me even more now. TSF is becoming a corporation more than just like a little record label. And I got fifty I got like fifty six artists like every every month I probably sign every two two to three artists every other month or so. Like two to three sometimes some months I, I end up signing five or six artists and I, I got a full staff of two, three hundred people on my staff. I just got a lot going on right now. I got big Trill over here, one of my partners that helped me do it. Um shout out Trill. Advertisement, marketing, management, content creation, and social uh, socialization between social media um, influencers and celebrities, uh, helping me deal with my with my fifty artist roster, um, you know. And I just I, I always look I, I I just understand the power in um, support and teamwork and uh, fellowship amongst people that's trying to achieve the same goals. And some people could make a hell of a world of a difference if they were just giving. 30 minutes or 30 days of of opportunity yeah. to actually exercise the the creativity or the skill set that they have or something that they might have the potential and you can just teach them what's, what's missing and then they become a superstar. And I, I've had a lot of artists do well because of me just, just giving them a shot. Giving them that blueprint. Too. Yeah, giving them blueprint, rapping with them, you know, just trying to create history in my state and in my region of, of the South, but also with everywhere else in America – they they fuck with us or they 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 relate to what we do, you know what I'm saying? And they reaches out now it's worldwide. I got artists from Japan, Puerto Rico, uh, Africa, Venezuela. I, you know I got artists that's from a lot of places. That's crazy reach. Yeah. One good thing about it, you're in a good pocket, and it's partly in due one to your age, two to your style, but you bridge the gap, and it it could also come from you know learning a lot of things at a younger age too, but. It's not just young folks' music. It's not just old heads' music. Like, it's music for everybody. 
You know what I'm saying? Even more, some of the more fly swag drip stuff, you still talking grown man business. You still saying some shit. And I don't think a lot of people are hip to that yet. Right. You feel me? Like, um, unfortunately, and it may be fortunately because obviously anytime you get eyes and ears, that's a good thing. But sometimes it happens where the, the social media antics might overshadow your greatness in the music. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's a hard thing to get around to overcome. Right. You feel me? Yeah. That's why I've been I've been chilling a little bit lately. Even like when the, with the way I record, like I don't be I don't be screaming as much with the ad libs on the ooeys and the splash and shit like I usually do. Only because with this set of albums, it's like I'm creating a different car company or a different car line. I don't want this vehicle to ride nothing like the Lamborghinis ride that I produce. I want this to ride like a Rolls Royce for you. And you but, could talk about that so easily because there's a lot of rides that you got. Yeah, so yeah, you ain't, it, ain't, it ain't like you're just I, I, making so. up some fucking... Yeah, I try to keep it as, as reality as I yeah. can because I'm a person, that, I'm a man of principle. I was, like we was talking about earlier, I was raised by my father and not raised by my mother. So my life was a completely opposite from the average person in the ghetto that go through the hardship uh, that I went through as far as like when you come from a single parent home it's usually you growing up with the mother and not the father I grew up with the father and not the mother yeah. while he was still paying child support on me but I was growing up with him that don't even make sense yeah. so at the end of the day I was taught a lot of principle and a lot of discipline and integrity but I still grew up fucked up so when it comes back to making decisions with music it's like I wanna, I wanna stand for something, and, and 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 I want my music and my legacy to mean something bigger than me. The way stay here forever because I'm from a city of legends, and I always plant for myself to be a, be a legend just like them. So it's like what he was saying earlier, the 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 antics and the way I acted. If I woulda been a different type of artist that would have sold out early and signed the record deal and let other people be in control of my image and be in control of how people be introduced to me, then I still would have not had the outcome that I personally wanted and desired for myself. So I knew that I'm a person that has the ability to captivate the minds of, of millions of people. And it's, I'm st- I, I, I am a very loud, charismatic person. I am a person that, that just free spirited, don't give a fuck, like video. Yeah, I've seen the New Year's Eve yeah. dance videos and yeah, shit. I, that's, yeah, I do that, yeah. but at the same time, yeah. I'm very intelligent, I'm very strategic, I'm very poised, I'm very put together, I'm I'm, I'm very collective, you know, I understand, and I have great uh, great perception and, and, and great comprehension of everything that I see and everything that I want to do or things that I plan to study and get involved in. So with my with my musical choice and how I make music is like, I understand everybody not going to catch the the message every time it's delivered. But for the people that do, they're creating a, a community of people that's going to fight and that's going to argue and is going to stand up for the message in the music that's being put out there to, to, and contested against other people's music because that's what music is outside of it being nourishment and fun and healing. It's a sport. You know what I'm saying? Music is a sport, just like the NBA, just like the NFL. And I'm looked at as a as an athlete that people compare to other athletes and their statistics and their stats. And people respect the stats that I'm going for versus the going for platinum records. I'm going for owning a multi million dollar record label, independency, and owning the 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 masters of these records for thirty and forty years. I'm showing that where these artists are going for a, 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 a 50000 to a $200,000 show uh, uh, once once a 30-day period of a year, meaning that in a, in a year they might tour once or twice in a 12-month span. They might tour once or twice and do actually 30 full dates back to back to back. Most of the time, it's spotted dates or not touring at all. You're in what's called album mode where you're recording the process of an album. You're not making money at that time because you, you're – you're not physically on stage. I'm teaching people that it's just like being a YouTuber or a streamer like how you are yourself. Every day that you wake up and rap and release music, you go to get paid for that every 30 days, whether you're doing concerts or not. Your music and you are a business. You are a company. You are a McDonald's. You are Amazon. So if you dropping product that's being played and um, used by the, by, by the public, then that should, that should be enough money or it should be 
taking you in the direction of making enough money to feed your family and feed yourself and chase your other dreams that you have off making music. But at the end, like I always say, some people really do need those record label platforms, extra push, shit, stuff like that. But because I know that I wanted to do it my way, I understand I'm going to do things or be a certain type of way. Cause I don't like to follow rules anyway. I like to make my own rules. Mm. I, I like to do my own shit my own way. So that's another thing. At times, I want to be like bra brazy just wild you know what i'm saying and yeah. enjoying my life i got one life to live but it's at times i want to do that and i know it's certain things that i can't say or do if i was up under somebody else's um yeah, control control or contract because they feel like okay well you know you messing up this business deal that business deal i don't give a fuck about no business deal i don't Absolutely. give a fuck about losing nobody into, uh, i don't into even give a fuck about youtube and we're on youtube right now right, you know, know what i'm saying? saying and look i'm gonna say this too because i ain't get i ain't get into this part right this is this is our hundredth episode mm -hmm. this is a big deal anyways i ain't know how i wanted it to go i knew that if i'm gonna do a hundredth episode the shit's gotta be rocking with somebody that yeah. it, that embodies what we do. <laughs> I do not give a fuck. I'm on I'm on this shit live. I could say a bunch of fucked up shit that people are gonna judge me for, and all all sorts of shit like that. And to be honest with you, if they do judge me for it, they could suck my dick too. I, <laughs> it is what it is. You feel me? It, it it's just like it's that freedom. I feel though, like man. you have to be yourself. And the thing is, is I make my own money. You know what I mean? So like the YouTube money, if it comes in and it does well for me, cool. I don't need it though. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people kind of like they fall victim to, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to fuck up with these people. I don't, I want to, I don't want to fuck up with those people. So, mm. yo, everybody welcome to episode number 100. This was a big deal for us yeah. and it couldn't, it couldn't be more special yeah. than yeah. it is right now with my guy Sauce in the building okay. because he's talking that shit. Yeah. Exactly like and and I, I'm 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 inspired by it. I'm right. motivated by it. I'm listening right. to you talk and I'm taking it as again like I listen to the music and it's like you're giving me business advice on how to move forward with what I'm doing right now. So I appreciate you like a motherfucker. Happy New Year by the happy, way. Happy New Year yeah. too, both of y'all. But yeah, just like just speak on that subject, it, it's just like what makes a Louis Vuitton shirt different than a Walmart shirt. The person that's selling it. Yeah. And the standard that they have in which they feel that their product is worth. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure it's some product on that assembly line that cost it the same amount of money to produce as some of the things that's being sold at, at, from regular clothing lines. Some of these regular mom and pop hood clothing lines, kids that's just starting uh, cutting sold clothing lines is making fabrics and clothes or that's at the same level of Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and, and, and whatever else. But they don't have the respect and they don't have the track record of sales and um their 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 fabrics being in platforms and places to where the hierarchy and the respect raises the dollar value of the product. So it's more or less like you have to believe in the value of your product before you make somebody else believe in the value of your product. And long as you believe in that value of your product and you stand out and put the work ethic behind it that makes it valid Regardless if you have naysayers or not, the proof is in the pudding. And um, i am always been a person that makes sure that my pudding is always proven. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like um, with music and with business that once you understand exactly what you want to do and how you want to do it, you just attack it. And then if you need help along the way, you get the help that's needed, but you just have to set a... Um, set a levy for yourself to where you know okay i'm tipping a little bit too over into the lazy side of things because i'm i'm asking for things to be a little bit too simple to keep them going forward but i might be taking a risk of losing everything that i worked for in the first place if that makes sense yeah. so it's like that because at the end of the day everything has a, a sunrise and a sunset and what a lot of people in music don't realize that you're not gonna always be on stage performing for a hundred thousand people or ten thousand people. It's gonna be a point in time where you're gonna be sitting at home and watching sports and and uh, traveling with your family and friends and and doing other things in life because you're not the hottest artist in the industry no more. It's just the same example as when there comes a time where LeBron James retires and, it's the, and the NBA is going to be about John Morant, Trey Young, and his son, and mm -hmm. which is already evolving to that point right now. Absolutely. And um, 
But man, that boy could still move. Yeah, he could still move. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I said that's why he's a good example because he's yeah. a person that's holding on that you would to the game as long as he can. Never dim and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's inevitable. Right, it's inevitable. But just understand in music, it's always gonna be a new guy. Just like in basketball, it's always gonna be a new guy. So if you're not making the right business decisions in music to have a way that you are uh, financially sustained and have time to have financial freedom for what you have done at the in the peak times of your career, then you're gonna be uh, somebody that's considered a failure because bills don't stop just because you're 40 years old mm-hmm. or just because you you're not on tour anymore. That's bills still happen. That's why these I don't want to be the artist that's waiting for the Millennium Tour for me to finally get recognition and some money again because 15 I went through 10 years of struggling of trying to be on this sitcom or this just figured life out and then finally they made a tour where I'm going to get 7,000 or 4,000 dollars a concert to perform platinum hits but I'm finna be touring for 60 days straight and you're paying the and you're paying the label with that money that comes in too. That's, that's crazy. You know, if you uh, if you make a platinum record, you supposed to be a millionaire for the rest of your life. That's just my opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, because it's a lot of people that never made platinum records that have more money than artists that went platinum. So it's obviously you know what I'm saying something something in the buildup of that, and it's it, 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 it's something in the structure that's not solid, solid but it's also. Uh, it's also a fault in some of these artists and the decisions that they make with their money. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you getting a, if you getting a check off of a business decision that you made early in life, like getting a trust fund or uh, getting a, a a lawsuit that you won and you didn't get paid the lump sum, you get a, a a money paid out to you for the rest of your life. How can you go broke? Absolutely. If you got a twenty year, you got a you got a twenty year lawsuit that's getting paid out to you in X Y Z amount of dollars a month. How can you go broke? You can only go broke for fourteen days of the month, twenty days until the next check come. Right. And people, a lot a lot of people uh, give that up. And I, I'm just I'm not a person that want to give that up. And it could it could be stripped away from you any second. You know, I'd like to take a moment to to send prayers out to Demar Hamlin. You know, I'm a Buffalo guy. And I was watching that game last night, the Buffalo Bills game, when when Demar Hamlin made a tackle and went into cardiac arrest in the middle of the field. They had to cancel the game, yeah, that was rough. and they were they were giving him CPR for for nine straight minutes to Did keep him. Did he pass? He didn't. He's alive. Oh, that's good. They yeah. they took him to the hospital to cancel the game. It's a it's it, it was a crazy game. So so you know prayers out to Demar Hamlin. Scary. The kid's twenty four years old. He's he's pursuing his dreams. He makes a tackle. And, and goes into cardiac arrest in the middle of the field. You never know when it's your last day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And are you, setting, are you setting up everybody around you? Are you setting up your children for success while you're on this yeah, planet? right. Or are, did you forget about it? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I feel like, you know, not only do people have an end, a end time just through, you know, just somebody else coming up. Sometimes it don't last, and a lot of time, and especially in the hip hop industry, you know what I'm saying. You've been through it. You you never know when it when it could be the last day that somebody comes after you or somebody tries to take your shit. Yeah, this shit saying? dangerous. You know what I'm saying just being alive in this world is dangerous. Being the, any any man having success in this day and time is is dangerous. No matter what your nationality, race, or background, if you are successful and living a a, a nice lifestyle where People can see that you have possessions or things that they want to obtain, and they just can't figure it out and do it. And they hungry, and they and they family starving. You are a target. But also as well, imagine that's what the that's that's what the the that's what the status is for the 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 man in America that has success. That's our current situation. So imagine being the 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 primes the prime person of that scenario is the artist that never gets to be in incognito he always has to be identified he all anywhere he goes you can put a mask on people know how your body is that's my favorite celebrity you can't go 
you can't go to the Walmart or a uh, 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 Publix with your child without somebody saying, "Man, can you just?" I mean, even with you having a podcast, I'm pretty sure it's one period of time where you were trying to do something with your family and kids or somebody. The first couple of times they feel good. Right. Oh yeah, man, they they recognize me from my hard work. Michelle, baby, hold yeah, on, yeah. take this picture. Yeah. But after a while, it gets to it, it. Well, I mean, I'm used to it, but I'm just saying, just as a person. It gets to a point, that's why Eminem used to rap about it, you never get peace. Sure. You never get a chance to be regular. So that if you never get a chance to get peace and ever get a chance to get regular, that means you always are on the job, always on the watch, and you always the target. It's not just about having jewelry. I know you got money. It's not just about flaunting and being flashy. People know who is who and what is what from social media because you have to be on social media to a certain extent yep. to get money from the Social revenue that's floating on the in, uh, on Which the is web. Some crazy revenue. It's great. It's crazy yeah. revenue. It's what does that do for your mental health, though? I'm like I said. I'm from the jungle. I'm from war. I'm from gang banging. Yeah. It's my is a past that I come from. So where for me, I'm always grew up looking over my back and watching my shoulders. I've been to the penitentiary. I grow. I come from. Uh, uh, addressing aggressive situations with strategical aggression and 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 um planned out premeditated aggression where we can have conversation and understanding of body language is exchanged to where both parties know we both on the same time but that's not for us yeah you know what i'm saying and um being an artist what people don't understand is that well, for people that listen to me it's like well that's not more, being a rapper is not more dangerous than being a police officer. Being a rapper is not more dangerous than being a, uh, tell that to a, to a Navy Navy SEAL or a Marine. Well, a Navy SEAL doesn't have to worry about the, 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 the opposition of the other country attacking him when he's walking in Walmart in America. He doesn't have to worry about that when he's when he has to go check in, in yeah, at the gym at 24 hours. Nobody's shit, looking yeah. at you at 24 hour gym while while you're lifting weights and you're walking in with your boots. You could come if anything. You could come in with your uniform on and you get more respect and yeah, people was yeah. not going to want to do anything yeah. to you because they know your face is the uniform when you're when you're the artist. Exactly. You know what I'm saying exactly. So and people are always looking for an opportunity where you're not paying attention or where you are slacking or lacking or where you not observant or you relax people are always trying to steal from you do something to you harm you mm. embarrass you on camera it's always somebody's trying to create a Come gain on, off of a celebrity even if they just want to if they just see you and say can i rap for you or can right. can i do this right here for you they gotta be exhausting after a while like, you know it, i uh, mean i i like i said i understand that i signed up for it i wanted to do it since a child and right. i've already made certain mental blocks in my mind where i don't look at life i feel like you enjoy life like a mother i do i do i, I absolutely do i have always been a, a a fun uh charismatic person i've always been a person that's adventurous i've always been a person that's willing to learn and listen i've always been a person that listen even though i talk a lot i listen a lot as well and i study a lot so maybe that's that's really why i have so much to say and so much to give when i'm given the opportunity to speak because i I meditate so much and I learn so much. So when I do um, go into music or uh, uh, just displaying the talents or the knowledge that I have, I have I have a lot of uh, ammunition at bay for myself. And then therefore, when I do learn or I am um, opposed in conversation or in in anything in life, where people are just trying to. We just trying to create dialogue amongst each other to to figure things out, or to l learn about something else. My presence is a respected presence in the room, so therefore the information is going to be channeled to me a little bit more than other people in the room because people see okay, he gets it or he 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 understands where we trying to go or what we trying to figure out. So either he can be useful, and I feel like people get the whole concept of using each other wrong like people should use other people that's what that's what people are here to do by the way with that said i appreciate you taking this interview yeah it's love it's yeah. love it's love it's love and like i said and that's the that's thing about it we need to create commun communionship and create our own industry where people have no problem with exchanging money with each other opportunity with each other support promotion with each other to where this this whole youtube thing is is just as big as cable 
uh, Wi-Fi, uh, PlayStation, motion picture, whatever. Social media is the most powerful thing on earth now, and it's cr- it's Absolutely. created a, a playing field and a balance to where, in some way, shape, or form, everybody's a celebrity. If you really, really look at it and, and, and diagnose it for what it is, everybody in this today's day and time has the opportunity and the power to either be a celebrity, reach a celebrity, get the celebrity's direct opinion and response. If you say the right thing in their comments or in their DM. Yeah, hell yeah. So, you speak it to the source. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it, it, in the blink of an eye with the right post or the right conversation, you take the right picture with the right group of people, you instantly, your whole life changes and you walk into a whole different room and spectrum. It's never been like that. It's never been like this yeah. before. You know, it, it, so with that being said, it's like with this new world that, you, that you're dealing with, it's like, are you going to continue to be a part of the people that's observing and complaining and having an opinion about what's going on or are you going to be involved in what's going on and actually making a difference whether you're making it to more of your liking or you're just doing it for the joy of doing it or or and not caring about the change you just you you live in life and you just want to be a part of the entertainment world and in the entertainment industry because a lot of people learn a lot from what's what's being the information that's being given out on these YouTube channels everybody in this room they have kids they kids watch YouTube more then if not more or equal to the amount that they with their family and in school. And they're better at it. And they better at it yeah. than you are. They better yeah. if your kids probably better at Fortnite than you. They better yeah. at looking yeah. up certain things on servers than you. So with that being said, it's like the information is being passed around. It's, it's important. It's not just frivolous information. It's not filtered information. It's filtered to a certain degree, but it's not filtered the way that TV, television has been filtered yeah. to us our whole life. So it's like, you know, Everybody has a a part to play in it right now, and it's just about if you're gonna do it or not, or if you're just gonna sit back and spect and, and, and spectate and watch, and that's fine too. But for the people that just sit back and watch, it's like just, I don't understand why people that just sit back and watch complain so much. But that's what comments is for. That's what opinions is for. But um, I'm just but like, everybody's got one. Yeah, right. Everybody got one. I'm just a person that's like do just do it and try to achieve. If you fall short. You get back up and you try again, and you know that's why I, I I don't have a particular rap style either. I'm, my rap styles are just my my moods or what I'm going through at the moment, or what I feel like. Um, it's it's, it's uh, important. I don't, I don't at the know moment. if you're familiar with uh, Budden and how he when you when he rap back in the day, but it's mood music. Yeah, you know what I mean, like if you if you're feeling that way, then you hear you can hear it in the music, and you can hear it. Right, I could genuinely hear like, I I could I could see where he's what he's feeling in this in this track right here. Why he's why he's talking about it. Yeah, what he's, what he's going through in that moment. You could you could fucking hear it through your music. You you're literally communicating with people. Yeah, you're just it's it's like you got you got your your I don't, I don't know how your uh, music making process goes, but it's damn near like it's a journal. Yeah, I mean shit, I freestyle everything, and I just really go in with a beat pattern. Well, I know. Okay, like I'm, I'm, I want to preach today. I want to, I want to send this message. So I want to preach. So boom, I get on the gospel type of beat or a beat that takes me to that lane. If I want to drip and I want to have fun, but I still want to get off some some aggression, then I go with that with that with those style beats or whatever. But everything is like really sporadic off of my brain because it's just like that's kind of like a. I can't say it's therapeutic because I've been doing it too long for it to be therapeutic for me because it's 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 too easy for me to get the soothing feeling from it like I used to as a kid and like the joys I get the the completing the process and releasing the project is the is the therapy for me. That's the yeah. It's That's the actually goal. completing getting having a goal having a a task completing it. And releasing it because as an artist, especially an artist that make good music, you and a person that again has the not giving the fuck yeah. aspect in him. I used to get caught up in these spells of making a lot of music just to listen to myself, and I wasn't releasing it to my fans. I wasn't releasing it because again, I got other ways to make money, and I'm such a heavily opinionated person that if I get into a space where I don't agree with none of the music that's being released from the world, I will shut myself off from listening to music in the world and just do other things that's not music related. 
and to where I don't have to be drawn into listening to music and I could just think because it's not no music that's helping me think. So then sometimes I get in that space and I just like, okay, well, I'm going to go record more music so I can listen to it while I'm driving around. And me and my partners and my friends, we listen to it. And whenever I feel like dropping it, I'm going to drop it. Like Ghetto Gospel 3, 90, I want to say 85% of that album is three years old. Oh yeah, I I, talk, I was telling him about this shit how that how music goes. And yeah, shit like, like that always blows my but mind. But goddamn, is that a good album? Nah, for yeah. shit show, like that's, for that, shit that's show. one of those ones right there. Yeah, and I'm I'm a I'm a heavy critic with yeah. music. Like there's a lot. I like I like authentic music. Nah, uh, I make that type foremost, of music. You know what I'm saying? So like that that part gets to me. But I'm God really trying damn, to battle like the that, grace, that shit's bro. really an entire. You just tapped in, and and when I'm trying to better the grace, bro, like. I'm one of them people like in my own in my own mind and space and being I've really been a phenom in rapping my whole life. Like people have always looked at me as a phenom with music, like in hustling music. Like I probably was making my first twenty bands of selling CDs and rap battling when I was like fifteen in school. Like I always made a way to make real money. Like how people was money making Mitch of hustling. I was I did that with rapping young. On top of me Figuring out, okay, oh, I can ask this girl and that girl to buy me shoes, do this and that for me, and they'll do it if I'm charming and handsome yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. other shit. Like, I, I always knew this young. So it was like um, I always wanted to be one of the best at doing rapping because I grew up in a time where lyrics was important, like punchlines and metaphors and subject matter. That shit was important. I'm a 90s baby. I grew up in the, I'm, I'm born in 1990. So, like, I grew up in the era where niggas would still had real bars and something to say. And it, it, was a, it was a competitive nature as lyricism just as much, if not more, than selling records. So you were born in the 90s. Who's the GOAT? My, see, my GOATs uh, are, like, people that the world don't know. Because, like, again, I'm so Houston-based yeah. when okay. it comes to my original... <laughs> Music. I want to hear what I want to hear what your goats are because I want to listen to that music too, though. Okay, so like my ghost if I had a top five, oh shit, I got two different top fives. I got a Houston top five, and I got a top five in general. All Houston people do that. Cause, this is because you got to though. It's yeah. just that's how that's yeah. just how it important yeah. it is because yeah. it's like our yeah. our culture <laughs> is so deep and and, and so. So many meaningful moments and memories come from our culture and our music. So it's like it's damn near kind of disrespectful to not have our own top five of Rushmore before you just integrate the top fives around the world. Because nobody from Houston is gonna have a top five without people in Houston being uh -huh. in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what it is. That's, and then, that's dope though, man. and as you want to say, yeah. it's the top five for these main people from everywhere else. You are gonna still be thinking about these people from Houston. It's just like that. So like yeah, my um my top fives is like Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, R.P. Fat Pat passed away early. Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, um, Slim Thug on you know, some my Houston top five. Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, Slim Thug. Um, that shit that, that shit has to start getting tough because I know you got to be like that. Yeah, because the last two, I got, I'm going to have to say J Dog. I'm going to have to say this, this it's an artist named J Dog. Uh, and, and probably, really, I want to say the whole screw to a click, but I'm going to just say Big, I'm going to say Big Pokey. I'm going to so say it would be Lil Kiki. Slim, Fat Pat, J Dog, and Pokey, them them my top five Houston rappers ever. Like it, and not just rappers, but people and personalities and what they was to Houston culture. Like an honorary mention is like a little flip or something. Like his personality, who what he was to the Houston culture and shit like that. But if I was to say my top five overall, like in music, then it would be again. Lil Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> it will be Lil Kiki. Then I gotta throw Fat Pat or J Dog. Uh, see, only thing made by Fat Pat is that Fat Pat he died after his first album. He like a uh -huh. Biggie Smalls. He didn't get to get a world, all the albums and everything that he had. So but it'd be like 
And then that's another thing to me about too. I like groups and factions, like rap factions, more than just one single artist. I'm yep. a so it, okay, but I would have to say, Lil Kiki, the like Cameron and Dipset, like this the Dipset. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah, my 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 person out of Dipset is Cameron, you know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> just the person, the mind, the style, the I you, I was really like. Killer Cam thing. Yeah, like Killer he, Cam. He was Killer Cam. Yeah, I yeah like, back like, to before like, that, but like, Dipset yeah. era is better. The Dipset era Cam is this. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, yeah it's just, cause and, you, cause, and Jim Jones and Jim and Jim, Jim Jones yeah. and Joels, them my boys. Like I love them. I look up to yeah, them niggas too. Yeah, Jr. Writer. Like, I try, well, yeah, yeah. Jr. Writer. Hair Rare, All them is legends. Them all goats and rap guys to me. Like you know what I'm saying, I fuck I, them. So it's them. Then, um. I would have to say, ooh, like I said, I got to keep saying J-Dog because of that pain, bro, and just, I just love J-Dog as an artist. He was so what like. you got, Lil Kiki, J-Dog, Dipset? Dipset, uh, outside of them. You said Pat, so that's four. Now, that, that, that's like. Well, if I want to say, I see, thought, that's I what I say. It's like with them, with them, I want to say screwed up, click like I did, dip yeah. set. That's just more fair because they all are the same. It's like, but these, I, I got certain orders that's better out of them. Like, like this more, more important to the history books or they, they did more. Yeah. But if they all would have did the same thing, if they was all, they all lived long enough. But then outside of them. Man, I don't know myself. Shit, I've been rapping yeah, so long. Let's go. I really have to put myself in my own top five, but because I've been rapping. I for think so. more people should, especially yeah. if you like. I, there's definitely a lot of people that are bullshit that they know they don't belong there. You know what I'm saying? But you, you could definitely say that. Yeah, and um, psh, I don't know, bro. It's hard to. I, it's so hard for me to not to me to pick somebody so that ain't from Houston. Or is it big? I was a neither. I was a person that was neither. Like I, they both rap good. I, but I think they both rap great. They both are poets. They both are rap gods. They both are testaments of time and meaningful moments. They both like they. I, I respect both. But I'm a person that I didn't grow up idolizing either artist. I'm from Houston. Like when you from Houston, nobody's bigger than Screwed Up Click. Nobody's bigger than Pimp C and Big uh, Pimp C, Slim Thug, Fat Pat, Lil Kiki, Hawk. These are gods to me. Big Mo, screwed up DJ Screw. Like I heard Pac because of DJ Screw. I heard Biggie Smalls because of DJ Screw. So to me, if I wanted that level of lyricism, my people listen to Scarface. Oh. You feel me? So that's, it's like Scarface. Scar, Scarface is like a person that we looked up to, and we looked at it's like, okay, he him. If he mm-hmm. when Scar, you ain't you ain't here when Scar, Scarface told Kanye West he ain't want to get on the song, or you ain't here when Scarface got on the song with Tupac. Yeah, he was on his verse was just as respectable. Mm. So it's like, but at the end, for me. yeah, yeah. Ooh. So I I'm, I'm a person that just like you know. I respect I respect both artists, but I was so caught up and intertwined in my kings that that's just really all I knew. And the only other place that I really was fond of their artists, like Houston artists, is New York. Like I like music from everywhere else too, but like New York and Houston, it just really stuck with me more than anything else. Even though I, I you know, like I I love the JD Kisses, JD Kiss and the Locks and Dipset and whole Jay-Z, I, I, I really like Jay-Z, like growing up, Nas, uh, even even people like, what, what's my boy's name, was A-Z? Yeah, A-Z, that yeah. Mace. A-Z, Mace, the whole uh, Rock uh, Rough Riders, Saigon. Saigon, yeah, True Life, I remember what Saigon Yeah, was. Like, you feel me, yeah. I, I, I really was deep into that whole Battle rap, even the young French Montana was hard. Mm-hmm. Like the Coke mm-hmm. Boys, French Montana, Max B. Like I always fucked with that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I like. Um, You're yeah. right though. You're right though. Like like 
you know, hearing you speak about all these artists that that it's not like I forgot about them, but I haven't heard them in a long time. It's like an entire fucking. It is. It's it's days. It's a novella. Music. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's a TV show. It is. It's bigger than just the music you're listening to. Yeah. This is what people look to to watch TV. Okay, look. You are you are you Latin? Yeah. You Spanish? Okay. So like where I'm from, SPM is Tupac. Okay. Like South Park Mexican is like the best. Like he like a person that people look at it like he's the Pac. Yeah, him and Zero, him Zero, Zero, yeah, him Zero, J Dog, and that people look at me like that. Like that's like how culture is. Like them people is like you know. I was listening to you talk about that about how um, Latin people and Black people coming up in the same neighborhood, they kind of share the same struggles. You know what I'm saying, and I feel like that not not enough really not enough people really even speak on shit like that. I don't know. They afraid to uh, people just kind of from places where the mediation and the and the and the and the, the, um, the integration of both parties, or maybe like maybe y'all not intertwined as much in y'all cities as as we are in Texas, but in Texas, like black and brown is like. Nine eighty percent damn near identical. We go through the exact same thing. We live in the same neighborhoods. Go to the same schools. Wear the same clothes. Wear the same jewelry. Like we do everything the same. Like there is no cultural boundary difference. Like well, they drive these kind of cars and we drive these kind of cars. No, we all drive. They drive pickup trucks. We drive pickup trucks. They drive four wheelers. We drive four wheelers. They wear cowboy boots. We wear cowboy boots. They talk like this. We talk like that. It's like the same, and we and we both get treated like dog shit yeah, when it comes both, to people. We too, both, you know yeah, absolutely. Like I, I, in the penitentiaries and in, in the county jails, we just yeah. So it's like um, I just can't see. I can't see that color barrier. I really don't. I try my best not to see it with nobody. Period. I love everybody from all races, but when people just try to create that division and hatred amongst black and Hispanic, they're just like so ignorant to me. Because it's like, it's a lot of things that black people get from Hispanics. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of things that Spanish people get from blacks. Mm-hmm. But it's really shit that we just created around each other damn near at the same time. Right. So it's all of ours, you know what I mean? Right. And me being a person, well, my dad is from La Ceiba, Honduras. Okay. 100%. My, my grandma and my granddad is both Honduran. So, like, I grew up watching football. With my grandma, not like American football, yeah, yeah, football, yeah, 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 yeah. football, yeah, even planting yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I just, um, I just always had a different view on, on, on that separation because I feel like you know, we 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 naturally are into the same shit. We all love old school cars, b- beautiful women, money. You know, everything. We love all the same things, right. and we love it from the same perspective. You know, right, that's the key. We don't love it the way that other people do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, Asians, Caucasian, every other race in the world have their have their things that's just culturally balanced, and it's more driven to them to to their w- way of life and thinking. And most people don't have, you know, the exploration in their brain to do that. Most people of, of our background don't want to jump out planes and jump off cliffs and, you know. Travel. Yeah, you know, we we just grow up differently, which is nothing wrong with either either party. I'm a person that I want to experience everything in life. But for black people and Hispanic people to be so similar and be so family oriented growing up with nothing, I don't understand why people try to like play those two parties against each other. Divide. Yeah, cuz you know, mute, and I think it's a lot of things that black people could learn from the Hispanic community if we paid attention and like, you know, just diagnose it for what it really is because if we could pick up that support system that Hispanics have amongst each other and share with it, with us all, I think we could be in a better place, you know, instead of just people feeling like I'm better than you because it is, so you better than me because of that. Like, oh, that shit is stupid. You better because of what you do. Mm. You're not better because of what you are or what you was born into. You know, you might have an advantage just because a, a, a person is a taller athlete than another. That doesn't mean he's better athlete because this athlete may work harder. And you know what I'm saying? 
really harness his attributes and his abilities that you was God given. You can't go against talent though. I mean, you you know, talent is talent, but yeah. there is a such thing called wasted talent and wasted ability. And um, you fuck with sports like that. I fuck with the mentality behind sports. Okay. I fuck with the structure and the purpose behind sports. I I compare a lot of things in life in an analogy form to sports. I fuck with sports, yeah, but I'm not a sports jockey. But the principle and how many different things in life that is comparable to sports and the importance the importance that sports has on the minds of millions of people, mm. that's what brings my interest to it. Because there's a lot of people that won't even focus and live on their own live in their own life because they're so consumed in sports and because they have so much either hometown spirit or invested interest through gambling in sports or pride yeah, yeah. in sports. And the difference is with music, the sports is that if you love music the way you love sports, you can always have an opportunity and a chance to get inside of music. Once you miss your window to be in sports, you miss the window. Yeah. So, you know. Um, One thing about sports and how it kind of parallel to rap is it's the pursuit. The yeah. pursuit of the greatness, to make yeah. it to the championship. It's right. It's 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 going all in on something. And uh, I experienced this in the fight world too. It's like in order to be great in those fields, you really got to be all in. You can't be half one foot in, one foot out. You'll never be great. With rap, with fighting, with sports, you got to be all. You got to sacrifice. Without that sacrifice, it's, it, the next man gonna do it <laughs> instead. He might do it for cheaper. So that pursuit for greatness, that pursuit for success and, and putting the family on and, and finally reaching that goal is, is very parallel between fighting, music, and uh, sports specifically. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Very the, interesting. The, discipline, the discipline it takes to just, you know, stay focused and actually accomplish something and get it done through pain in the adversity because, you know, working out is painful. Um, becoming a successful musician and making a thousand to millions of different opinions and walks of life and mentalities adhere or like your music is a painful process. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody's not built for it and get through it. And for the people that do get through it, I respect it. Yeah. I have a certain level of honor and respect for them, for anybody that finds success in, um, in the entertainment industry because it's, 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 it's very not respected how tough it is to be successful in something that's so abroad everybody wants to do. People think that you just got to be lucky or you just get... you just born with it. Yeah, you just born <laughs> with it. No. Uh, it's it, it, it's the same process, if not more. It's strenuous. It's working out in the gym and dieting. You got a gift, though. Yeah, for sure. You got it. Like, the personality is crazy. Like, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with who Andrew Tate is. Andrew Tate, yeah, yeah, all the yeah, shit that he I love just him. went through. His personality is yeah, crazy. Yeah, I love him. And they just, yeah. they just, they just took him in. Um, yeah. I know he got arrested recently for some OnlyFans shit or some bitches or whatever. He's out, but like he's out. Yeah, it was a twenty four hour hold because they had nothing. Oh shit! Yeah, but like that, 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 that Bullshit. motherfucker's personality is. Yeah, is I, wild. I fuck with him. He a god. I hear a person that I look at like myself. Like I look at myself like a god. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he a person that look at himself like that. And when you have that that understanding with yourself in the world, and it makes y'all a target. Yeah, so you know you just gotta be careful. That's why you know, like I don't do too many interviews and stuff like that. And you know, I only, you know, I talk a lot, but it's so much more that I could talk about that I don't. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So it's just like, and at the Which end of the day, smart what do I know? Says about you. Who, I'm just a dumb rapper. What do I know? I don't know anything. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A person like Andrew Tay, I love what he does. I love what he stands for. And um I feel that the energy that he's exhorting and putting out to the world is gonna create more people that's gonna put out that energy and have an even greater understanding that it's okay to be a man mm -hmm. and it's okay to have principle. That's the message. And it's okay to... It really is okay to be a man. And I uh, feel like most people just hate on that shit. Yeah, no. And then, like I said, at the end of the day, if we living in a world with so much equality and understanding and um, forgiveness for choices that people are making, then I feel like people should have that same understanding for a person 
that looks at itself with absolute confidence or absolute assertiveness to be a conqueror or to be a champion or a gladiator or just a, a champion m- mentality of a man versus to looking at him as a narcissist. And I believe that the world has just come into a space where everyone wants to have an opinion that is a protected opinion so much that we are losing certain values and certain building blocks and stepping stones that was set in place for people to have a correct direction as they're walking forward in that, in that journey in life. And I believe people are just sacrificing some of those moral codes to just do. Just so they don't cause a stir. Type. Just, just Yeah, just like. to keep things going forward. And at the end of the day, hey, to each his own, you know. I'm a person that if people live how they want to live, I, I can't be too much judgment, too much judgmental about the way everybody else feels about what a man should and shouldn't do. Because I know there's certain things that I do that people may not agree with. But at the end of the day, I know that I, the principles that I do stand on as a man and a hardworking man and the alpha mentality of buildup of a trustworthy, protecting, hardworking, um, sacrifice taking for the, for family and friends like those just natural essences that's supposed to be installed in a man and being a leader I have those attributes and I stand on that and I'm not gonna let the opinion of the world or other people change that but it's not also uh, a way of life that I have to press on the next person but at the end of the day, I do not agree with raising a generation of weak-minded men. I don't agree with that. Absolutely. I don't agree with uh, raising a generation of men who don't understand troubleshooting and problem-solving with oneself in the mind more than just crying out to excuses to get for, to excuses for their failures or for the things that they do wrong or not even just things that they do wrong, but blaming anxiety or uh, 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 circumstances of other people for your own failures or not being able to bask in the glory of your successes when you don't fail because the world is telling you that Failure is unacceptable. Not no, not the feels on your simple that a man that a man that does you're not. You're all des- even if you if yeah. You that a man a, a man does not deserve it. to be praised is it, or a man does not deserve to be praised and valued. It ain't cool the to way be that a, a woman the way, the way that a woman is right. right. It's not it, it, it's not. It's like not I, a, I say this. This is something I talk about a lot that I feel like is important, and that that people get con- uh, confused or might s- switch it up however they want. I got a son, right, and. I, there's no doubt that as a man, you want your son to be a certain way. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, absolutely. And I'm a, I am I want my son to, like, I, I want to take him to his for, first sports game and enjoy that. And I, I have no disrespect and no ill will and no problems with anybody from the LBGTQ community. None at all. But I want my son to be a, a straight man. male. Yeah, you want a man to be a man. I want, him, I want, him, to to a a man. I want him to play Straight sports. Up. I want to be able to watch the games with him. I want that more than anything. And I feel like they're so often they're saying, like, oh, it's wrong for you to think that way. You should let him be with Nah, hell no. You can't tell me that it's wrong for me to think that way, wrong for me to believe that. It's, it's not, not saying I, I It's I, not because what's the difference between you saying, I don't want my son to grow up and be a gangster and a criminal. I don't want my son to grow up in a, a, a hard uh, community where people with poverty and, and guns are the first um, – opportunities in situations that my child is going to run across when they're not in my eyesight. What is the difference between saying that I want my child to grow up in a safe, protected environment than saying I don't, I want my son to grow up with a clear understanding of why he is meant to be heterosexual and why he has a job and a duty to keep the bloodline of this mm. family going because it's not just about, a a selfish idea of I want to control the sex or the gender of my son. It's the uh, the same thing to say that I want my family's bloodline to continue to grow and prosper and to continue to go on. How can my family's bloodline go on if my son is not procreating? 
If, if if my child is does not understand it, his semen and the process of him recreating life and keeping the bloodline going so that our family lineage becomes something great and continues to go on, he plays a very important position in that we're not only having a wife, but but choosing the right wife or the right woman to bring a, a new child and a newborn into this world with so that she even understands the goal and the mission that us as a family are trying to achieve and create. So therefore everybody that grows up in this family has love, care, abundance, financial freedom, uh, access to opportunities and, and therefore and, and therefore on. Yeah, like why can't we how create do you, our kingdom? How do you create the Hilton family? How yeah. do you create the the Wooty Woop family if you don't continue to create more generations of sons and daughters because you you agree with the fact that it's selfish to not want your child to have a was was obviously a correct decision making with his sex with sexual preferences anybody can have their own choice of sex sexual preference for 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 leisure if that's yeah. what you choose to do leisurely even though i may not agree with it but if that's what you choose to do in leisure then fine but when you're talking about what a human being is meant to do that's where you can't argue with the facts you can walk outside all day you want and say i would claim myself as a man, a, a woman, and I'm a man. Or I claim myself as a man, and I'm a woman. But you cannot reproduce another human being, yeah, without the opposite sex. Whether you doing it in the circuit, circuit kid, or whatever you're doing, you have to go back to the old school, yeah. fashioned, proper way, way. of life yeah. to recreate Absolutely. a new human. So that's real. Uh, so, so with that being said, if that's not a good enough reason alone to want your child to grow up straight because you want to continue the growth of your family, then I don't know what is a good reason at all because what is the point of everybody saying they love family and they want to protect family and I want to work hard to feed my family and this and this and that for family, but then you don't want to instill uh, uh, morals and decision-making into the family that you're creating to not only make good decisions, to be a good citizen in this world and be a good human being in this world flow that you're going to be a part of, but also to understand that once it's going to come a time where I'm the parent changing your diaper and then you're going to have to be working hard and have enough money and success to where I'm going to be old and you changing my diaper. Mm. Because that's the way that life goes. It's Absolutely. a cycle. Yeah. It revolves. Just like you said, you know, you're there for a minute, but eventually, you know. Absolutely. So with that being said, uh, there's parents that, that have it already prepared from the conceiving point of their child, the type of relationship and layout that they want to have for when they do get of elder age. I don't want to be put in a old home. Put me in the back house or whatever. You, I got to yeah. put me in the mansion, <laughs> sit me in the living room in my rocket yeah, chair, yeah. whatever, so be it. But yeah. if you do not, if if you don't, Lay those the, those rules and guidelines and, and 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 way of thinking into your children, then that's not going to happen for you. And obviously, the belief system that you, you know, that you put in your child and that you allow them to think is right is wrong plays a heavy 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 percentage in in, in decision making in that in that choice for them. But at the same time, yeah, it's up to you. It's up you to don't, you to be a parent them, and have a conversation. Yeah. You don't make them hate nobody or you yeah. don't make them be completely, you don't, you don't make them be completely against or negative or derogatory towards these people because of their decision making. All but, we got to do is tell them where they come from, right. who we are and what yeah. we, you know what I mean? Let, like, you just let them make their own decision, yeah. and take, but you just, I, I feel like when people give their family members purpose along with not just trying to, you know, this is the religion that you should believe in or this is the way sexually you should be. I think it's more or less when you give a person understanding their purpose of why is what and what is why and how important their position plays in the continuation of that. Maybe they make make different decisions. But again, we're living in a world where a lot of people of this generation grew up without fathers, grew up without mothers, grew up on tele grew up from watching television or grew up yeah. from the cell phone yeah. or whatever. But like how you said, as a father of a of a of a son or a daughter, you definitely wanna have emphasis on 
the at least the beginning starter package of the directions that your child makes. Absolutely. And the fact that we living in a world that wants to strip that right from parents and from families, that is just as much of a crime and a uh, 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 something to be discriminated against as people who discriminate discriminate against the LGBT whatever the community is. Yeah. If you, That's how I am. I be, I be trying I'm to just sure real. I don't give a hate, but I'm from the hood. But nobody gotta like me. Yeah. Nobody gotta like black folks. Nobody gotta like so I was walking none of that. I wouldn't give a damn because at the end of the day, hey, look here. I'm just real, bro. Yeah. I'm just real. I respect that. If like you gotta like me for who I am, or you not gonna like me for who I am, I don't give a damn. I'm gonna still do what I do. Hey, look, I believe in polygamy. It's some people that don't believe in that. I believe in a lot of shit that people don't believe in. So at the end of the day, but one thing that I know over anything is that life has a natural cycle. And as a parent, you as soon as you get a child, you are dealt, you are handed accountability. You have to be held accountable for this child's nourishment, safety, food, shelter, education. It's a certain age where this child is supposed to be put in school. Uh, uh, dental work, all of these different requirements that if you do not do these things, society will frown upon you, disrespect you. Uh, uh, people will not will lose love and genuine care and relationship value for you because they feel that you don't love your own child. So if you have, if you are held to all of these different standards for this whole human being that you're raising, how you are not responsible for giving them clearer decisions to make about their sexual preference choice and what they do in life period. That's, that's like saying that it, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be in control of telling your kid not to drink alcohol before they're 18. Yes, you should. You should be in control of your kid drinking af- alcohol after they 18, because if they dumb and they not, they don't have experience. You can just because you want to be a biased parent and let Timmy, experience he got too drunk on his second or third time drinking and now he's had a, a drunk driving accident and he's killed someone else and their child or you lost your child and your child is dead mm-hmm. in this car accident because you wanted to let them make decisions of their own without giving them the full detail repercussions of both sides of the All fence right. and i feel that that's not right and that's not fair yeah, no, bro, you 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 nailed that shit. <laughs> Cause that's that's what it really is about. Um, you it's it what, what you were talking about when when you were mentioning the Andrew Tate shit and him being able to say what he wants and that that's exactly what you do. It's just that it's it's very simple. All all I'm saying and all I ever said was, let me also have my own choices. All right. Like I, well, I'm okay with anybody's choice, but just be okay with mine too. Like be Absolutely, okay be yeah. be okay with the fact that. I enjoy being a man. I think it's fucking dope. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, so. I think I think it's dope to enjoy pussy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think that's fucking amazing. I think people, I think more 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 men should enjoy it. If they <laughs> don't, more pussy. then shit, fuck it, don't. You know what I mean? Start but a like, campaign. It's okay. I'm, I'm okay because, and, and, and I was forced to accept because at first I was kind of like hesitant. I was a young kid that, I, I was born in 1985. Right. So when I was born, it was bad. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, it was actually like, oh my God, he is be. a sinner. You know what I mean? Like God, God said you shouldn't do that, and, right. it, and it was that. You know what I mean? It was that mentality, and I, I and I used to talk shit and bully people for it when I was a little kid, and then I grew up and I was like, okay, that's wrong, and I knew that, and and I'm and I, and I accept it and I understand. I don't, I'm not against anybody for believing in what they believe in in any facet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you believe in the devil, cool. You know what I mean? That's what you believe in. That's fine. That over there. I'm not mad at it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, but but let me also believe in what I believe in. Absolutely. And don't get mad at me because I'm a man and I enjoy being a man and I enjoy these certain things. Don't say, oh, we're, you know, you're too much of a, 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 a mass. Well, how do you say it? Masses? Misogynist, misogynist, having yeah. mas- masculinity, or some shit toxic like that. Mas- Whatever the fuck it is, yeah, toxic, toxic masculinity. All the words that they say, like why, uh, why is, why is that okay, such an issue? Okay, well, you got to think about it like this. For number one, what the world has to understand, especially women, it is naturally in a man's nature to be polygamous. Majority of the people that's in relationships with men or in polygamous relationships that don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. You're sharing this man with another woman, regardless if you're accepting it from the front door where y'all sharing this man together in each other's face in the same household, or 
you get him from Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and she get him Monday, and Wednesday, shit. and Sunday. And, and you, you don't know, know about it. Right. You know what I'm Regardless, saying? y'all still sharing yeah. bodily fluids. Y'all still sharing the same human being. He's still over here being with your kids on, uh, for a little while, having a lifestyle over here, and he's still doing it over there. And, 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 and in the same regard, men are also in these same polygamous relationships with women and other men that they talking to because – you don't you're not being a hundred percent with the woman that you are having this relationship with. You're not giving her the opportunity to say yes or no to the type of man that she's dealing with because most women men, women want to deal with an alpha male anyway. They don't want to deal with a man a man that other women don't want. They don't want to deal with a man that doesn't know what he wants out of life and that's not assertive and that's not fully in fully in 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 confidence and in 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 unison with himself with what he wants from his woman what he what he what expectations that he has for her and what also women have to understand too is that it's also naturally in a man's nature to fertilize a man is a man is meant to insert life in a woman life does not live in a woman life is harbored in a woman life is incubated in a woman life is preserved in filtered and created in the captivity of the womb from the life in the man the sperm cells the living sperm cells that come out of the sack that's the life and a man can do that every 30 minutes every five minutes a man can impregnate and recreate life five times in one day a woman can only recreate once in a nine time cycle in a nine in a nine month cycle so again even by nature of humanity even by nature, even by nature of humanity, it is made for a man to deal with multiple spouses of women. A woman who wants to be in a relationship with multiple men, that's now even though I understand outside looking in, people are gonna say, Well, that's greedy, it's not fair, this is this and that. Oh, you just wanna be with two women, so why can't a woman be with two men? Because a woman cannot lead two men, mm-hmm. nor can a woman be led by two men properly. And even if a woman is a leader and is the breadwinner, a woman cannot fertilize and create and manage the attitudes of feelings and emotions of two different men who want to be the aggressor or a leader. And it's that's it's also weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna say that without being without being disrespectful Absolutely. to anybody. It's also weird yeah. because obviously if in that situation, one of these men are not is not as manly, is not as aggressive as the other man allowing it. So that means it's actually two women in this situation with one man is is Yeah, when women are doing shit yeah. like that, they're Come, fucked up. You do, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But in, in actuality, it is a and there is more women on earth than there is men. And there's a lot of women on earth that have been derived and deprived were deprived of the opportunity of having a husband or a man in their life or a father figure with their kids or but they dealing with toxic the toxicness of arguing with another man, uh, another woman or another family over a man that she loved that she wished she could have solely to her family but if you brought everybody together and people was the man in the middle would be a leader instead of a liar and a manipulator misleading people and give the, these women the opportunity to either agree to coexist and not be dysfunctioning and and, and, and and problematic amongst each other. Now you got three different in- incomes helping these children, or if the, if their children are there, you got a man who like again who is naturally by nature polygamous, naturally by nature o- o- meant to overly fertilize. He is meant to fertilize naturally by nature. But if you you can put the nip, you can put the nip in the bud before it even happens and block the man's temptation by giving him what he wants in the first place two beautiful women that gives he might what he gets from this woman is might not what he gets from this woman what he gets from this family member not what he gets from this family member but at the end of the day it keeps the man focused from cheating and getting away from his loved ones because he's searching for what he's missing when the relationship loses spunk or when a relationship loses its its fire or it's uh uh yeah because you see a lot of motherfuckers in relationships that 
they'll they'll lose interest, but they get back to it after they went to something exactly, else. Exactly, because yeah. you 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 in this main relationship or your primary relationship, you in that relationship for I don't want to say it's not survival, but you're in this relationship for everything that matters in life. Everything that matters in life, majority of people find that person or that after they filter through all the bullshit people that they go through in life, they find that person and, and latch on to that person. This is usually the person that you try to give your child after you done made a mistake of giving a child to the wrong person, you not giving another child to another woman till you know she fit or, or, and vice versa. So usually when people get to that point in life and they meet that person they have their relationship, they, they, they go on this journey and they embark on fun, love, experiences, and time. And then eventually either the interest is lost hardships of a reality comes with finances, money, travel, opinions of others, uh, a man just being a man, traveling with friends, going out, getting drunk, and a man m makes mistakes. There's a lot of women do as well because the women be sensing or feeling the lies or feeling that a man is already doing it to them. So out of guilt of already feeling like it's happening, they start searching around and looking for yeah. shit, and then now you have these problems in this line, cheating and and. and, and and deceiving going on amongst each other and the two people that actually love each other, y'all still get nothing accomplished. So a lot of people that be in these type of toxic situations could actually have the simplest answer with the man just being a leader saying, look, I love you. I love you. I got this. I feel like this way about you. I feel this way about you. If, we could come to some understanding where either about y'all both gonna let me coexist and do both things with both parties, y'all both will get the best out of me. Right. Because Everybody I can win. I, I don't have to because uh, a lot of fathers that walked out of their children's life didn't walk out of their child life because they didn't love or didn't want to be them with them. They just didn't have the balls enough to tell the woman that mm -hmm. they love mm -hmm. and that they made the new child with and their new family with. Yeah. They don't have the balls to tell this woman I still got other responsibilities and other people that I made these decisions with before I made you, met with you. And what ends up happening is a child end up losing, a, a child end up growing up with resentment and hate for their father or having to grow up with another father that really don't got love for them at all. I only got love for the woman that I'm here with because they got that. It, it just it just creates so many different um situations that could just create a a a, a poor raising environment for a child or for a woman to where everybody involved end up because people don't realize how much time you put into your relationship or arguing with the person that's your significant other when shit go wrong that shit can fuck up a whole work week a whole workout regimen mm. a, 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 a test Especially construction hell yeah so yeah. it's because a man cares a lot when you give Hallelujah. a when you give a lot of love yeah. to a woman and and, and a woman don't understand that sometimes a man's love is his hard work. I can't always give you my affection and hugs and kisses, but I make sure that everything for you needs to be done in life. And I still give you as much love and affection that I do. Right. But at the end of the day, guess what? If I could have another another wife that I love or uh, that I have just as much as you just giving, because at the end of the day, this is what people got to get up with. A majority of men are doing this. Majority of men will have a home, a wife, and people they love, and they still got their mistress and this or whatever the little girl that they go. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of men that get cheated on and done wrong by their wife, she really was a woman that would have never did this to you. But once she see that you did it to her once, yes, she took you back. Yes, she loved you, but now you've opened up the door for us to have an open relationship, whether you like it or not, because you already cheated on me. So now I want to get my one up back on you. Yeah, hell yeah. Now that We're I, I, I concert battle. Yeah, yeah, you, you game. Boy. Yeah, you you created you've created this space now to where you show me that you can love me and I can love you to a certain extent, but we can go have a sexual encounter or a relationship with someone outside of this relationship, and you will take me back without any penalty or without any um any new rules or constituencies or any violations for making that decision or any life changing, like meaning that, yeah, we back together, but the rules and the layout is completely different from how we was together originally. Yeah. Therefore mm -hmm. for us to be functioning with, together properly. And then a lot of women do things out of being lonely. 
And it's sometimes it's not being lonely of just a man's attention or their man's attention just being lonely from not having someone there to hear their opinion, hear their feelings, to be told that they're pretty, told they're beautiful. Yeah. You st- yeah, I know you had two babies, but your body still look good. Sometimes they don't respect that opinion from their from their spouse and from their man. But if it, but let their homegirls tell them that they fine. Let their homegirls tell them that they cute. Let the girls that they go to the club and get drunk with and twerk with tell them that they cute. These are the same women that you will listen to and leave me over. So why continue living a lifestyle where I allow the other people in your life to be used as weapons against me and people that you going to have a certain love and respect for as well yeah, they that also go. probably yeah. have a secret agenda that like me too? Why let these type of things be a weapon? Man, he's spitting gems. This whole joint is just straight spitting nah, it's gems. Nah, re- it's real life, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's real life. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Taking back the fact that you were raised by a man, yeah, and, you, and you're that in tune, though. Yeah, man. You know, I, 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 I didn't have a love for, for, from a woman, so you know, a lot of people. I don't want to say it's baby, but just a lot of people just always had that empathy from a woman. Oh, baby, you fell down on the bike, you bust your knee. Let me fix that for you. Or your your first girlfriend broke your heart. Like it's okay, uh, uh, baby. Put some deodorant on. You musty. Put de- put lotion on. I never had a woman to tell me put lotion on. Right. Like I grew up a completely different way than the average person in the in the ghetto. Because again, the average person grows up without the father, and that's accepted. That's understanding. Like people, it's 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 so common where people ex- don't nobody even look forward to Father's Day. Don't nobody even expect nobody father to walk into school on on parent career day right. or, or or Valentine's or any of that shit. But everybody expect your mama come. Yeah. Everybody know your mama coming on Valentine's Day. Everybody know your mama coming on uh, 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 first prom to drop you in your first yeah. little. You know you get the little pre middle school prom yeah, and yeah, you get yeah. the real big boy. Yeah, yeah, your mama yeah, yeah. drop y'all take a cute picture. Yeah, I never had none of those experiences. So. I had to counsel myself and learn, but I did have experiences with my mama in life, but they was always fucked up, grown adult experiences that a child was not supposed to see early. So it's like, and my daddy was 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 stern. So it's just like I just had a a a, a great mixture. It's a fucked up toxic mixture, but I had a great mixture of experiences in life that just made me have a different outlook and perspective. So. I just grew up like feeling like why should I have to lie to a woman to be the way that I want to be when I can just be honest and truthful that I love you, I love you, and I love you. And I feel that if y'all want the best of me, y'all should let me be in a relationship with all of y'all so I can be loyal and faithful to us as a group and I don't have to be distracted by the distractions of life. Meaning this this what gives a man the confidence to step in a room with thirty beautiful sexy women and look look at them like see that's what the problem is oh, oh oh most women think that they have the ability to captivate a man's want and desire to the point to where he feel she's so beautiful and he loves her so much that he's willing to not do anything outside of her respect factor to lose her and that's just Honestly, just not in a human man's nature, bro. Not a man, a woman has to lay down her back and open herself up to and uh, be inserted in. It's a whole different process than what a man mm-hmm. does. A man does the inserting; he does not be inserted. So, with that being said, it's no emotional. Well, not, not, not all men. We talking about real ones. We talking about real ones. We talking about the real. Yeah. We talking about the way the shit is Hell supposed yeah. to be. So with that being said, like a, a a man does not have the same emotional attachment from a sexual encounter or uh, having it's the real deal. Yeah, having a relationship yeah. with a woman that, that on and off. But at the end of the day, majority of men do not know how to control that desire, and they don't know what they're actually going for in the first place. They just they just can't control themselves when it happens, when the urge happens. It's like when you're trying to diet and eat the right food, but you had an urge to go against your diet and, and eat the dairy or whatever that's not yeah. within the gains list of, of your meal prep. It's just naturally in a well, where where it is with women. Women were meant to be protected. Women were meant to be exclusive. Women were meant to be preserved. Women were meant to be hard to get to. A woman uh, that you were choosing to be a wife or uh, uh, was was supposed to be uh, the 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 hardest woman to have access to 
of all the other women in the village. That's why you chose this one. Because that's why most kings was looking for the virgin or looking for the woman that hasn't been scathed by all the impurities of everything that's going on, going up hard in the village. That's what, and then by a woman being that precious diamond, and then you teach her the other needed a minute and the other needed um, theories and thought process that she needs to have understanding of how a queen should be. That's what makes her a queen. Not saying that a woman that has been through a, you know, a lot of experiences or been through other shit in life cannot be picked and treated as a queen. Yes, she can, but. Just like women have this standard for men that I don't want my man to be broke. I don't want my man to be weak. I don't want my man to be short. I don't want my man to be dirty. I don't want my man to be all of these different things that, that is socially okay for them to have these rules and standards for, for, for men, but it's not socially okay for men in this generation. In the prior generation to us, yes, it was. But in this generation, it's like it's not people just – it's uh, it's so much, and I I call it false equality because it's not even really about mm-hmm. being equal at all. It's just really more or less about people want to just feel confident that they have a voice and their opinion that has to be respected by others, which is fine to voice your opinion and have it. But you know, we're just speaking on reality. A man, just like a a woman, isn't very important. Has her values and and has her purposes for the world where it's needed. So does a man, and a lot of women and people don't care for a man or realize how important a man is until they in danger and they need a man mm-hmm. or until they're going through hardships in life right. and they need a man or, or, or until they have been with a man that is not an alpha male and a situation yeah, he's comes run, and he's and, running and covering with right, you, you know and, 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 and you have to protect him and now you, you now you just now you reconsidering your whole decision making of why you've been laying with this man or credit a family with him because if he can't protect you how can he protect your children yeah. Yeah. if he doesn't have the the if he doesn't have the lion's instinct to yeah they want us to be a certain way to to avoid their confrontation or whatever but in the right moment if you're not that uh, you, Jesus you Christ! For being a man, yeah. but when it when it really comes down, man, to it, I, I yeah, I appreciate the fuck out of your perspective because it's not yeah. a perspective that's often told. Again, obviously, you don't give a fuck. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Cause the- I feel like kings should be able to be kings. If you want to be a, a a councilman, you should be a councilman. If you want to be a jester, be a jester. You know, with, that's fine. But you know, at the end of the day, if you know. What makes a car run? What makes water flow? What makes music play? Meaning that at the end of the day, you can't put in a you can't put a battery in a muck controller the opposite ways and the battery the muck controller work. It doesn't matter. That's what you like. What what's the right way is the right way in certain aspects of life. Yes, creativity and exaggeration and, and doing different shit is supposed to be. It, it explored yes that's cool but you know what i'm saying at the end of the day I, I i i feel like a lot of people miss out on the the best parts of life worrying about what another person think a lot of people miss out 100%. and also also just not chasing their real truth because they are afraid of the opinions of society and other people Strangers. and while we on the subject for the people in the LGBT community, they are getting to explore all of their ideas and their opinions. So why cannot a, a person that's masculine? If a person that's masculine and manly wants to install that uh, mind frame, just like a person that's a feminist, that's all for uh, uh, women's empowerment. I, I love women empowerment. I love women. I love the growth and the intelligence of women. I, I love it. But I also think women are here to produce and make children. And women are here to teach and love and and nurture nurture and groom families and 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 heal the wounds of warriors and men. I, I understand that a woman can be a warrior too, and she and a woman can go fight and all that. But in actuality, if women are, if women are these precious things that we think they are, why would we even want women at war in the first place? Mm. Why would you even if you value women and children and look at the woman? 
the way you do, why would you even want them to go through yeah, some of right. the things that men go through? Because I would never want to go through some of the things that women go through because I'm not no, I'm not a fucking girl. Yeah. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So why would I even want to create this thought process of making a woman go through manly situations? Therefore, when something manly is done to the woman that that was misled into thinking that she can do some boy stuff that she, oh, this is a good situation. I could use it. I don't want to use that. Yeah. But it's like, I, I let's just say it like this. Just, just look at it. I don't even want to say that. I don't even want to say that. I don't even want to say that. <laughs> it, it, is this day, something that's controversial in the real world yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's cool, though. It, I mean, it ain't, I get, it ain't nothing too bad. It ain't nothing too bad. It's just like, at the end of the day, women ain't, Women ain't meant to be in jail and be in bad situations as long as a man is be, is meant to be in that. Women are not meant to do a lot of the things that you... So, therefore, when a woman makes a woman decision, once that pressure is pressed upon her, don't be shocked or mad or, 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 or fucked up about the result that you have to deal with because you put a woman in a man's shoes and allow her to make decisions that a man was supposed to make. And, and I feel the same way about a man trying to do what a woman do. A man is not meant to raise a a woman. A, a man. A, a, that's why the balance is so important of having two parents in the home because you don't know what blessing that the universe is going to give you when you conceive a child. But at the end of the day, a mother should teach a girl and teach a young lady how to be a young lady properly and how to mannerism herself and how to carry herself and how to do certain things. Which that, is not often done. Especially in this day and age, you know what I'm saying. I heard, I heard them records too. I'm telling you, I was listening. Yeah, that's so. really how it is. Yeah, her yeah. sister was raised different. She did a lot better, but this one, uh, she ain't yeah. doing a good motherfucking job. Yeah, but so. um, but yeah. So that that's how I like. I, I look at the world and I share a lot of the views that that you speak of and the shit that you're talking about. Like, it just it, it's it's super important that uh, people are safe to communicate about things that way without feeling like we're pieces of shit. Yeah. Uh, without feeling like we're less than or we're less important and things of that nature. So, um, man, like, this this is everything I expect when I have an interview with somebody. This this was that talk. Like, this is yeah. episode 100, God damn it, of the Danza Project. Yeah. I wait, appreciate the wait, hell out man, of Man, love, bro. Yeah, love. Man, I appreciate I appreciate y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, Listen, uh, something I say about the Ghetto Danza Gospel Project. Ghetto Gospel 3 out right now, man. Y'all make sure y'all get there. Ghetto Gospel 3. Uh, shout out to all the artists on the TSL roster. You know, everybody from top to bottom. I'll be naming people forever, so I really don't want to do that. But y'all know who y'all is. Let's from go. Peso down to Rizzo, Sosa Man, Sancho, the whole TSF, Conglomerate, Vucci Peas, Wood. Y'all know who y'all are. I love y'all. Um, and it's more music, uh, more opportunity coming. I'm going to be signing more artists. I'm going to be always giving out knowledge. Um, I got a new YouTube channel that I'm starting, South State TV. My YouTube channel has 150,000 subscribers in the in a uh, and like a, a six a six to seven month span of me actually using the um, platform because I didn't use my YouTube for like four or five years. Um, yeah, I was only using like World Star Hip Hop and like No Jump or other platforms like that. So uh, I, I feel really good about that. I'm independent artist. Was in the top ten records of the nation, not just in hip hop. Top ten in the nation, right with the Taylor Swifts and the Elton Johns and and the hip hop artists. Um, you know, I just feel good. I feel accomplished. There's more work to do, more more love and more knowledge to give. And at the end of the day, I hope everybody get from this interview is that over everything, uh, be yourself and be the best version of yourself regardless of who you are or what you are. And um, never be afraid to challenge the opinions of others in the direction in which you should go, even mine, you know what I'm saying? Challenge my opinion. Challenge what I'm, whatever you feel that you've learned from me. If you feel that you, everything I said was absurd and stupid, then shit, more power to you. You know, my, my opinion and, and my perception is not for everybody to, to, to reciprocate and hold on to, but be a person that is not afraid to figure out why and what things are the way they are and understand where you play at in this in this whole symphony, in this whole 
a movie and how can you make your role is 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 detrimental and as important to this world as you can so therefore you leave off a you leave off a, 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 a energy in a way for us that makes your way of thinking and your perspective keep going. And I, I feel like it's a lot of people that keep doing the things that they do because someone before them left off an energy that uh that couldn't be evaporated and it and it was inspirational. So I'm just one of the type of people that whether people get a spot off my energy or not, I just know I'm here to make history. And I'm going to keep making history and keep dripping and keep making good music. Hello. And, Come on. You know what I'm saying? Keep being a representation of what I, what, what I think a, 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 a superstar and a genius is in my, in my world, in my spectrum. So, you know, I just want people to know it, it's okay to, like how you said, it's okay to be a man. It's okay to be a, a leader. It's okay to be a, a conqueror. It's okay to be a warrior. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be different. It's okay to, you know what I'm saying? want to own something instead of just work for something. It's okay to chase ownership. It's okay to, you know, be resilient and just do it do it different. Just, you know what I'm saying, as long as you ain't doing nothing at all, that's the worst person to be in the world is a person just sit around and don't do shit. Nothing. You just wasting air, wasting oxygen, You're just wasting life. You're just alive to be alive. You know, somebody else could use this energy and, and this oxygen and there's people that they they wanted to do the right thing and wanted to take advantage of that shit, but life just kept giving them so many bad cards out the deck they just couldn't do it. So you know, I'm just I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to be born with all ten toes and ten fingers every day. So you know what I mean. Just taking advantage, get this money, drip this sauce, man. Spread this word. I appreciate all the fans that support me, support my music, support my train of thought. You know, Houston, Texas, every every city, every state. Shout out to the Danza Project for having me here. Uh, appreciate it. You know you. what I'm saying? I love what you guys are doing. I, I checked your page out before I came here. I love the content. And, uh, you know, we just we just make our own industry, but we still working with the industry. Shout out to the whole music industry. Shout out to the major labels. And, the, you know, salute to them. You know, salute to, salute to everybody that's, that's winning and thriving within this world. Find your way and make them pay. You know, that's how I feel. Find your way, make them pay. Hey, Amen. Hey. All right, we appreciate you, my G. Landon, go ahead and cut that out. Cheetah. Splash. <laughs>